So very quickly, let's go to Joel chapter 2 from verse 23 to 27. Joel 2, 23 to 27. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vase shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and honest, and my people shall never be ashamed. Restoration. He said, no from the world restore restore is a combination of two words re and store re actually means again store is where you keep something precious. So what do we mean by restore? Restore means put back in the store that which was taken away from the store. That which was taken from the store, put it back again. That's the meaning of Restore. I will give you a few more examples to let you fully understand the word. In Psalm 51, verse 12, Psalm 51, verse 12, David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David was saying, I knew joy before. Then I lost it. Please put back that joy into my soul. When you hear the word renew, for example, is it means Make new again. Re stands for again. When you hear the word return, it means turn again. Example, in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 22. Jeremiah 3, verse 22, God said, Return unto me, ye backsliding children, and I will hear your backslidings. To backslide is to turn away from God. And God was saying, turn again to me. When we talk about Total, we mean complete, nothing left out, nothing left unattended to. 
First John chapter one verse seven. First John chapter one verse seven says, "The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sins." We're talking about total means we're not leaving anything behind. What is the difference between restoration and total restoration? It means the restoration must be complete, leaving nothing behind. In Mark chapter 8, from verse 22 to 25, Mark 8, 22 to 25, they brought a man to Jesus who was blind. Jesus touched him and asked him, how now? Oh, the man said, ah, I can see, I can see men like trees. His sight was already restored. But Jesus touched him a second time. I said, okay, how now? He said, ah, I can see perfectly. The restoration has become complete. I pray for someone here today. Your restoration shall be complete. Yeah. I will take if the Lord allows me, three major examples, physical, material, and spiritual. At least I will take those ones. The others will let the Holy Spirit himself teach you. Physical. Second King chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14. Second Kings 5, from verse 1 to 14, is the story of Naaman, who I'm sure you know very well. When Naaman was born, he was born completely whole. No sickness, none at all. But as he grew, somewhere along the line, leprosy came in. And then one day, the God who knows the end from the beginning, allowed somebody already in the house of Naaman, a girl, a slave, that Naaman had captured in war, to have the boldness to say to the wife of Naaman, if only my master can get to the prophet in my land, he will be made whole. You know the story. Naaman went to his king. The king wrote a letter to the king of Israel. <laughs> and when the king of Israel saw the letter, he thought this is an opportunity for trouble. Because there are certain things that no king can do. But the man of God heard about the matter, sent for Naaman, told him what to do. He got angry because he was asked to go and wash in a, a river that he considered very dirty compared to the rivers in his hometown. But you see, when your day comes, 
when God has made up his mind that he wants to help you, nobody can help you. Not even you. Neiman got angry, but his anger didn't stop God. I don't know who God wants to heal first. But tonight, even your own belief is not going to stop God. The anger of Naaman didn't stop God. His pride didn't stop God. He obeyed. He dipped himself seven times as he was instructed. And when God healed him, the Bible said his skin came to him like that of a small baby. If you know anything about leprosy, when leprosy comes in to the life of a man, very soon he will begin to lose fingers and toes and ear lobes. Even the nose will be gone. So even if a leper is healed, there will be signs that he had been a leper before. But when God decided to heal, he healed totally that there was no sign left. I have good news for somebody tonight. By the time my God finishes with you, there will be no sickness left in your body. trying to see what I can jump because I can feel God is already here. God has a timetable for everything that happens on earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. God has a purpose. He has a timetable for each purpose. And you know what? When your day comes, as the Bible says, God will arise and have mercy on Zion because the set time has come. I have a feeling within me. I could hardly sit down because I have that assurance that there are at least a thousand people here tonight whose day has come. If you are one of them, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Is it possible for God to heal completely? I will tell you a story. Several years ago, 1983, to be precise. I traveled abroad. When I came back, one of my daughters came to me and said, Sir, my grandma is sick. They've taken her to the hospital. They've operated on her. And now 
because of old age, they won't refuse to heal. Now when she eats, the food is coming out of the place where they perform the operation. Some of you have heard the story before. I said, I'm sorry I couldn't go, but I believe in God. I got an handkerchief, prayed over it, and told her to take it to the grandma. Got to the hospital in the special room where they were keeping her, laid the handkerchief on her, prayed a simple prayer. By the following day, they couldn't even find the point where they operated her. That God is here tonight. And he, you, he had told you, he selected those who gave the testimony tonight. He had given you examples of cancer of different types. The one that they said is incurable. Etc. Etc. And when God finished the job, they couldn't find any trace left. I decree, in the name of the one who made heaven and earth, tonight, whatever is in your body that my father did not put there shall be uprooted. The Bible says, God will perfect that which concerns me. That passage is written for me. I don't know about you. Case number two, Materia. Second Kings chapter four, from verse one to seven. Oh, thank you, Father. Daddy asked me to tell somebody, from now on, you will never borrow again. <laughs> Second King chapter 4, from verse 1. It tells us the story of a widow of one of the sons of the prophets who was heavily in debt. And the creditors came. They wanted to close up on her, pay us tomorrow or we will come back and take your children and sell them. She ran to the man of God. You know the story. The man of God said, what do you have in the house? She said, nothing, just a pot of oil. Man of God told her, go, borrow empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Who? Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody enlarge your capacity for wealth. And the man of God told her what to do. Borrow empty vessels, borrow not a few. Shut the door on yourself and your children and begin to pour out the oil. I need to inform you. Like I said, during the summer last Sunday, 
When God says he wants to do something for you, please don't use your little brain to try and figure out how he will do it. When he says somebody will never borrow again, Amen. Amen. There are some business people here who will not understand how that can ever be. But take the word of the Lord. He has spoken. And it shall come to pass. When the man of God said to that widow, begin to pour out the oil and set aside that which is full. That was a very stupid thing to say. The oil was small in a little bottle. How can it fill a big vessel? But there is a God of increase. And that God is my God. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I can assure you there is at least someone who came here by bus tonight before the end of January. You will buy your own car. Daddy, how do you know that? How is that going to happen? I don't know how it's going to happen. It is done. Anyway, you know the rest of the story? The post began to fill up until there were no more empty vessels. And the woman came and testified. Please take note of that. Because there are many of you out there with big testimonies. And you, and you didn't come forward to testify. You want to hear the testimony of others. It is important. Testimony is important because once you testify, the devil can't steal your miracle. If you keep your testimonies to yourself, it can still be stolen. The testimony God will give you tonight will be permanent. God expects you to come back and testify. That widow, all of a sudden, had enough money to pay all her debts. That's restoration. But she had extra to live on for the rest of her life. That is total restoration. Any day you cry to God for help, expect Him to do more than sufficient. When that little boy in John chapter 6 from verse 5 to 13, John 6, 5 to 13, when that little boy gave Jesus Christ his lunch, Jesus didn't just feed the 5,000 people. There were 12 baskets left over. The blessing that God will release on someone tonight is not just to meet your needs. It's to build the kingdom of God. You will have more than sufficient. I 
tell you another story. I remember we were having a Holy Ghost service at the Redemption City, and God spoke. I said, Ah, there's someone here. You're going to have three major breakthroughs. <laughs> Well, if you claim it, so be it in Jesus' name. And said to her, the first breakthrough belongs to God. He said, the second one belongs to you. He said, by the third one, I will wipe out your debts. The woman came. The woman came. Shortly after that, she had her first breakthrough. Now I know her very well. She had 16 children. Is this 16 or 17? Children that she was looking for. She was heavily in debt. The husband was gone and the debt was so big because the husband was not just owing in Nigeria he was owing in London the first breakthrough came she brought the money to me I said no ma I can't touch your money he said why I know the problems you have Hey, said, but God spoke through you that the first breakthrough is coming to him. I said, how do I know you are the one? She said to me, sir, to miss the remaining two breakthroughs. I said, no, uh, take it. So I took it and hid. God bless my, uh, forgive up my unbelief. To cut a long story short, she got a letter from London. The bank in London says, we are sorry. Your husband is not owing us. We are the one owing him. They don't make that kind of mistake in London. But when God wants to step into your situation, He can do anything. Do you know it wasn't long after that that the lady became a member of the board of a very big bank? Because when God moved, not only was her debt wiped out, the money those people said they were owing, when they paid, she had more than sufficient. I know a little bit about the God I'm talking to you about. He can do all things. And I have good news for someone. You are going to enter the new year debt free. sense you're welcome once again to our youtube channel rccg ncp tv is a place where your life is being nurtured the life is built even onto the fullest measure of the stature of christ the scripture rightfully speaking it said this day i've given unto you the power to choose to make choices to decide on what you want god has given us that power the power of life and death to listen the tongue it's in your perfect ability to make do of what God has given to you to see that results in your life come to pass. You use your mouth to shaping your destiny, to shaping how you want your future to look like. And that is one privilege God has granted unto us. Life and death has been programmed 
by the power of the thong. And so whatever you decree, it shall surely come to pass. I remember God speaking to the people and he said, whatever yeah, you say into my ears, that will I do. So God is waiting for you to speak to him. God wants you to communicate to him. God wants you to let him know, speak out, let him know what you really want him to do for you in your life, touching every facet of, of life, business, relationship, and even much more, the ministry, everything you can find to do. And so he wants you to let that ring in his ears so that he would work effectively also to bring it to pass. Prayer remains one of the most effective tools um, that by which we can command things in this kingdom. And so I wouldn't want you to be tired of praying. Keep praying. The message which you've listened to, I believe, will stay you up to pray, stay up to believe God the more, will stay you up to keep loving the Lord and doing his perfect will. That is why we're here on this space to see to it that every word that has been spoken by God surely comes to pass. In your life we trust the lord to bring our great messages um from god's servant pastor Ia Deboye, bringing light and life to you and ensuring that every aspect of your life is touched by the power and the mighty hand of god and to also see that you become part of our community paul teaching timothy he said do the work of an evangelist preach the gospel be instant in season and out of season that people you may want to reach to and you may not have that privilege of reaching to them it's very simple you can do that now by simply clicking on the share button of this video and sharing this video even to them share to them their loved ones family members neighbors and friends who also need to get blessed who also need to be part of what god is doing in seasons as this and so we'd like you to please reach out to them with this video share this video to them let them also experience the wonders of God even in their life. And if you are not yet a, a part of our community, you can do that simply by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell. This will help you to stay in touch with us and get notifications whenever there is a new upload of our videos on this channel. And we also like you not to forget to leave us a like on this video, drop a like on this video, and also leave us with a comment. Sure, we would get responses to you. God bless you so much. We love you so much. And we'd like to see you in our next video. Thank you.